the SWAC tournament in March. And it looks like, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, play is ready to begin again. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Capital One, Joshua Hawkins, Gambrell, Byard, and Kendall, the five for the Braves. Joshua flips, and that ball will head out of bounds through the hands of Jeremiah Kendall. That was something that I predicted for Alcorn State to get the ball into the paint quickly. A look at the Capital One starting lineups for Bethune Cookman. Hetty, Harmon, Dyson, Ward Jr., and Henderson Jr. Who swings a pass inside, leading to an easy dunk for Reggie Ward Jr. Yeah, Reggie Ward Jr. is one of those athletic forwards who serves as a hybrid on this Bethune Cookman team. He can play inside and out. Fans will be loud and active in this game. You can see along the far baseline, they are standing. Shot clock to five. Down to two. Down to one. That's good. A big time bucket to tie it up by Kendall. And yeah, we watched Bethune Cookman trying to scout against Kendall, who has post abilities but also face up skills. Dyson operating into the corner. Harmon with five to shoot. The floater is up off the back of the iron. And looking to run are the Braves. Gambrell will launch. Catches the rim, tipped around, grabbed, flipped up. No good. Tracking it down is Gambrell. That was one thing Coach Bussey talked about was Alcorn State wants to get on the boards as much as possible, create offensive rebounds, more opportunities to keep Bethune Cookman off of the open floor. Byer able to draw the foul, and he'll go to the line for a pair of free throws off the foul against the Wildcats. This just shows you the efficiency offensively of Bethune Cookman really moving that ball to get a Reggie Ward dunk. Byer shooting just 54% from the line this season. Back to back games with 12 points each. This is the first. Landon Bussey talked to us before the game started. He felt like their non-conference schedule, which featured 14 straight road games, helped prepare them for a night like this on the road. Yeah. The good thing is Alcorn State gets to see the energy that could be tournament time, right? How to play under pressure at the beginning of the game, not just because the game presented it. Dyson harassed near midcourt. Ward will launch. Hits the front of the rim. The rebound controlled by the Braves and Jalen Hawkins. As that ball knocked away from Joshua. This is not a team in Alcorn State that will do a lot of damage from three, working underneath and an easy two for Jeremiah Kendall. This is the advantage that Alcorn State has. They have two very skilled post players that can create in a myriad of ways. And a foul. As hopping into the lane that time, Harmon. Foul will be picked up by Gambrell. That'll be his first. Back to work is Dyson. Harmon checked by Hawkins. Four to fire. Wing three misses. Joshua down the floor with the pass. Lining up a three and hitting his Hawkins. 
You know, Hawkins is one of those guys that can do everything. 6'4", but can handle the ball, can manipulate ball strings. A big guard plays with a lot of energy. Good start here for Alcorn State against a Bethune-Cookman team that has played very well here at Moore Gym this season. 7-1 and one at home on the Wildcats. Yeah, so far we've seen Bethune-Cookman really struggle to get themselves going offensively. And how about that? Harmon gets bailed out there with the foul. You see Alcorn State pushing the ball with pace and finishing three. Resume he has. He's also the athletic director, 124 career wins in 10 seasons. He is a busy man. Well, he's the only athletic director in Division One to be a head basketball coach in Division One, and so it just tells you like the guy has to have, be organized. He has to know how to compartmentalize. He has to do, be able to do everything. He said he likes being a multitasker, and that is taking it to the limit for sure. And he's gotten his team off to one of their better starts in conference play in recent memory. Is second free throw is knocked down as well. Three free throws out of that foul as the shot clock was expiring. So it's 8-5 in favor of Alcorn State. Kendall scores with a right hand from the foul line area, 10-5, the lead for Alcorn State. Yeah, Jeremiah Kendall has great touch around the basket. Really can make those tough shots look easy. Spinning in the lane is Ward. Falls off the side of the rim. Controlled by Byer. Catch a shoot three from the corner. It's in from Jeremiah Gambrell. Yeah, very quick, direct guard on the hunt for his shots at all times. He must be marked in the open floor. Reggie Fears wants a timeout. A strong start for the Braves on the road. Three-point shooting. Steamrolling near the top of the top 25. They've been great so far this season. We'll see what they have in store for Georgia Tech as a part of Super Tuesday. 13-5 lead for Alcorn State. The three coming up short from Hetty. And another rebound grab by Alcorn State. Alcorn State's doing a great job on defense, limiting Bethune Cookman to one possession. He's done. Kendall in the lane gets fouled, and he'll go to the line for a pair. So early on, the defense of Bethune Cookman not able to solve the offense of Alcorn State, who was shooting just 42% from the field as a team. But 71% to start out this game as Kendall knocks down the first. And Kendall, he's the key cog offensively in terms of scoring. Team's leading scorer, eighth in the swag. He adds in two more. It's a lead of 10 at 15-5. He's extremely skilled for his size, and it makes him a matchup discrepancy because of his touch around the basket. Once he can get his shoulders square, he, you are in trouble on defense. Harmon with a lob! Oh, my. Jacoby Hetty with the hammer. That is honestly what the Thorne Cookman needed at this moment to get a little bit of momentum shifting in their favor. Oh, what an answer from Jalen Hawkins with the dagger and the twist. He said, sit down. Yeah, that, I mean, that's an eye contact move right there. That's got to be the ultimate confidence. He comes up with a steal ahead for Joshua. Joshua drops it in. 20 to 7 lead for Alcorn State. Right now, you can see that Alcorn State is hot from the perimeter on the defensive end, showing their ability to get out the open floor. Playing competitive.
complete right now. Another miss and a rebound for Joshua. Catch and shoot three missing out of the hands of Gambrell. They let that one go a little bit too quickly. Harmon will answer. That was one of the few times that Malone Cookman was actually able to get a fast break. We talk about one of the top teams in pace in the nation simply because their defense leads to offense. That time, it paid dividends. Harmon averaging 14 and a half points per game. It's a 10 point lead. Joshua to the post for Byer. Byer. And the lane stuck with the right hand, puts in two more. And yeah, that two headed monster and Byer. And oh, let's see what we got here. The follow tip is in from Reggie Moore Jr. The pace hot and heavy to start. That's what makes this game entertaining, especially uh, for two teams that like to get out and go. They understand the that you don't want to play against half-court defense when you have this type of athleticism and skill out there. So you want to get down the floor before the defense gets set. Driving up and in is Jalen Hawkins. What a start for Hawkins. He's got eight. And play will go the other way as another error committed by Bethune Cook. John, what are you seeing there are so far? The turnovers. Those turnovers lead to more possessions for them. And they haven't been able to dictate like they would like on the defensive end. Bethune Cookman is second in the nation in steals per game, averaging 11 and a half. Tops in the swag. No difference making plays defensively yet. Wing jumper. That's good. The Kadrian Thorne knocking down the jumper to extend the lead to 26 to 12. Thorne, a veteran on this Alcorn State team, just knows how to play the game the right way. Harmon swings a pass into the corner. Ten to shoot, turning, spinning, and scoring is Derek Carter Hollinger. Carter Hollinger had himself a great game this past Saturday against Jackson State. Showed his ability to shoot the three, get to the basket, get out in the open floor. A great energy guy for the Thorne Cookman. A save made there by the Braves as they're able to keep that possession alive to Joshua. Still. Lining up a three from the corner, and it's Harmon. Zion Harmon plants a three and cuts it to a nine-point game. Zion Harmon has come to play today. He's hit big shot after big shot, while Bethune Cookman has been in a deficit. Approaching the midway point. Of the first half, Joshua down low and a dunk. Business decision, sir. Jahi Benet. Let me tell you right now, I saw Benet doing some scary stuff in the layup lines. For that kind of size, he is an elite athlete. 11 point lead at 28 to 17 for Alcorn State. To the block for Carter Hollinger. Three by Harmon. That's all. Carter Hollinger right there with a the foul. Carter Hollinger always playing with a smile on his face. One thing that Coach D has talked about was getting him implemented. More touches on the offensive end because of his creativity. A turnover from Dan Brown. As Bethune Cookman trying to get their offense going. Arm Alcorn State. This is off script from what they normally do offensively. Yeah, one thing that Coach Bussey talked about was trying to dictate Bethune Cookman's pace by making it a slower game. They're running, they're getting out and going, and they are an opportunistic break team. They do not mind getting out there and making something happen. Another mob! <laughs> Once again, they attack the rim. It's Hetty with the two handed jam. 
Well, Bethune Cookman is doing a really good job of adjusting to the defensive changes that Bethune, that Alcorn State likes to put on teams. Off the miss by Willie Anderson. Another opportunity to move here. Dyson peeling off. Now Harmon. Harmon creating. Lobs it up with the right hand. No good. Battling down low. And now the Braves on the move the other way. Throwing it up at the rim is Jalik Gaines Wyatt. And it goes out the other end. Harmon down the floor. And that will be a foul and a bullpen. As a three-point play opportunity on the way here for the Wildcats. And we have an injured player then. As Coach Bussey talked about, they don't want running, but they're doing the running. Yeah, well, they are capable of it. And one of the ways that they have, they have started the run is their defensive stops. So when they get those defensive stops, they're trying to get in there before they go against Bethune-Cookman's pesky defense. And it's working to their advantage by scoring early. And then they get to go back on set defense. Harmon already has 11 for the Wildcats. Benet got it back and drops it home. A couple of field goals for Benet. Launching the three is Jacoby Hetty. That's a big shot from Jacoby Hetty, who has been all over the place as far as running the floor, getting alley oops, now showing his ability to knock down that three. Thorne with the feed. Gaines Wyatt with 10 to shoot. Catches the rim. Carter Hollinger rebound. Hetty will launch. Rims out. You see how quick they get down the floor. Why they're known for their pace. Michael Pajo, who just reported into the game, grabbing a rebound on that last sequence for Bethune Cookman. Four. He'll launch. That one grazing the rim. Hetty. Coach Thea is telling his guys to run their sets. He's big on that and making sure that they run continuity so that the talent level of his team can get busy. Seven on operate. Carter Hollinger with the kick. Corner three, short. And controlled by Kendall. Soon Cookman has cut this down to a three-point game. Kendall and a foul as he made his way towards the paint. And that will put Kendall on the free throw line when we return. Delivered so far. Absolutely. It's been entertaining basketball. Both of these teams are really getting after it. I'm impressed with Bethune-Cookman's ability to come back from a big deficit, and that started on the defensive end. 10-2 run before that free throw by Kendall to increase the lead out to four. The run put together by Bethune-Cookman to get back into this contest. They trailed by as much as 14 in the first half. When you play as fast as them, you get a lot more possessions than the, um, than the common team. And so with those possessions, you get more opportunities to come back. Eli Holsey into the game for Bethune-Cookman. Dyson into the corner, Carter Hollinger. Holsey gets boxed out by Kendall. Joshua on the move. Right down the middle lane, puts it up, and it's... Kendall did a fantastic job of making sure Jose couldn't even get a touch on the ball. And that started the break for Alcorn State. And a foul coming up. This will be against Alcorn State. And it will be charged to Byron and Joshua. Reggie Ward back in. As the bench of Bethune Cookman making some adjustments. 14 fouls so far 
on the Braves, who lead it by seven with six minutes left to go in the first half. Ward lost the ball. It will stay with Bethune Cookman. Talking to Landon Bussey before this game started, he he made reference to, and we mentioned this earlier, the AFC Championship game yesterday, and he felt like Baltimore got overwhelmed by the moment. He did not want his team to get overwhelmed by the moment, including this crowd, and so far in the first half, they have not. Yeah, I mean, you could tell he was a little salty about that Baltimore Ravens game. And he is from Baltimore. I knew he was from Baltimore. Right when I heard him put the emphasis in use, I knew it was the B-more. I said, you, you look like a Ravens fan. He was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Knocked away and stolen. The lob and another one for Hedick. This is when the Wildcats are at their best. When they can create easy offense from intense. And that has been through them creating more possessions through turnovers. They have active hands. They're known for that. And in order to combat against that, if you're Alcorn State, you have to take care of the ball. Did I catch you swag surfing? I was absolutely <laughs> swag surfing. <laughs> what I love about this environment, they got the band in here. I mean, it is absolutely electrifying. Hawkins. Easy access to the rim for Jalen Hawkins. Shifty move from Hawkins there. Off the miss, a run out for Hawkins. On the move, Euro in the lane, can't get it to go. A rare misfire by Hawkins tonight. And they'll go back to Bethune Cookman. And Hawkins has been impressive. He's showing that he can do it in the half court as well as in the open floor. That was one miscue for him. He has started the team's last three games. He's averaged 13 points per game over the last two. So he's made a difference. Being inserted in the lineup. There's another guy making a difference. Jacoby Hetty. He is having a strong first half. As he makes his way towards double figures, he has 12. He's shown that he can shoot that three. He's kind of done it from the attack, whether it's driving, creating turnovers on the defensive end, as well as in system. He's been great. Gambrell finds the bottom of the net. Gambrell is a great shooter, instant offense, and can score it on all three levels. Hetty. Nice pass inside the Ward. Ward gets swatted by Kendall. Hawkins with the kick to Byard. Byard lays it up and in. Alcorn is getting down the floor so quickly. I think it has caught Bethune Cookman by surprise. Harmon no good on the three. The Braves control. Gambrell on the attack. Falling out of bounds and he stepped out. A frenetic first half of basketball from Daytona Beach. Come on back. So him in the open floor creating for teammates. Representing the Bronx. And he has been representing here tonight. Ten points leading Alcorn State in scoring. Averaging just over six points per game this season. Different story tonight. Carter Hollinger missing. Tipped around and grabbed by Kendall. Bethune Cookman got this down to a three-point game. But the Braves have answered. They just started doing a better job of taking care of the ball. And that is how they've been able to throw that lead back up. Kendall falling away and then threw it out of bounds. Looked like he was expecting someone to be there in the corner and nobody was home. Yeah, and, you know, I think he was looking also for a foul there. But I think that, you know, Reggie Ward did a really good job of walling up and making it as difficult as possible. Making him have to get to his contingencies. Seventh turnover for Alcorn State in the first half. This is an Alcorn State team that averages 
69 points per game. They're already at 40. Good ball movement. Petty three. Money. Big three needed and necessary for the Bethune Cookman Wildcats who were on a little bit of an offensive load there because they hadn't been able to get any turnovers. But right here, you saw they had the ability to score through system. Hawkins. Into the post. Inside for Kendall. Knocked away. Byard able to get rid of it. Two to shoot. Down to one. The launch. The long miss off the three by Gaines Wyatt. Controlled by Kendall. The team's leading rebounder. Wow. He blasts through a defender. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Don Harmon sacrificing his body on a bigger offensive player. Did whatever it could to get this possession. For Bethune Cookman, you see him, he walls up, takes a huge shoulder. That's a man's shoulder right there. That's 6'7, 215 pounds, going up against a smaller Zion Harmon. Yeah, those are real shoulders right there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Zion Harmon, part of a giant, six foot. <laughs> <laughs> Running 165, took that charge with ease. Ward trying to go one on one. Now, Petty inside for Ward. Baseline jumper up. That's good. Carter Hollinger knocking it down. That was great patience from Bethune Cookman, not just throwing something in the basket and looking for the referees to bail him out. Got a high percentage shot there. Three-point game again. Hawkins. Having trouble, nearly lost it. Out of bounds and back over to Bethune Cookman. I love it on both sides. Both of these teams are having runs here, but it's all based on the competitive button being pressed by both of them right now. Bethune Cookman is doing everything they can to gain possessions by having active hands, taking it up a notch on the defensive end. Harmon approaching 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Three from McIntyre. That's good. Damani McIntyre. Damani McIntyre known for his defensive prowess, showing his ability to step into a three there. The program leader in steals has tied it at 40. Seven seconds left. Gaines Wyatt dribbling in. Tried to bank it in. Could not. Tipped around and out of bounds. As the first half comes to an exciting conclusion. A fun first 20 from Daytona Beach. percent throughout a portion of that first half until finally the defense of Bethune Cookman came alive to make some big plays to force nine turnovers ultimately of Alcorn State. Meanwhile, Bethune Cookman, just two turnovers in the first half. Yeah, I mean, Bethune Cookman really was, you know, just playing against in a very efficient Alcorn State that really did everything they could to put the ball in the basket. Ward attacking and giving Bethune Cookman their first lead since it was two to nothing. Handle, deed up by Ward. Smart play for Bethune Cookman to come out with because Ward went straight at Kendall trying to get him in foul trouble. Byron Joshua getting an easy layup on the first offensive possession for Alcorn State in the second half. Byron Joshua is also known for his ability to facilitate and pass the ball. Nobody wanted to give up a pass because if there was a penetrating pitch, it was probably going to be a dunk. You don't want that momentum coming out into the half. Corner three by Ward. No good. And the rebound taken by Jeremiah Gambrell. Joshua lost the ball. As Yusuf Tamara getting some burn here in half two. 
He sets a screen here for Hetty to feed the Ward. Ward is fouled. You can tell that the game plan in this half was for Ward to get himself implemented and attack the post play of Alcorn State because if they're out of the game, all right, things work a lot smoother for a Bethune Cookman. Ward on the way with the first. And that gives the lead back to the Wildcats. Alcorn State, winners of two games in a row. Boone Cookman coming off of an impressive 82-71 win over Jackson State on Saturday. One out of two for Ward. Alcorn State trying to regain the lead and improve upon their 3-3 three and three mark in the SWAT. Fire. Seven to shoot for Joshua. Down to two. Down to one. He launches. And loose and now controlled by the Wildcats. Great defensive possession for Bethune Cookman. Really making it tough. Harmon thought he got hit. Missed the layup. Down the floor for Kendall. Turns. Got it and one. Fantastic job of pushing the ball ahead to Kendall, who could get himself a one-on-one -on -one situation off of one to two dribbles. Great finish at the basket. Tamara will pick up the foul. And Kendall won a shot of the three-point play opportunity. And he knocks it down. Kendall joins Hawkins in double figures. It's Kendall now leading. All scores for Alcorn State with 11. Harmon leans in and draws air. Grab though by Ward, lost. To the wing. That three's up. No good out of Gambrell's hands. And the rebound controlled by the Wildcats. Tamara with the feed to Ward. Tamara's at home. Great ball movement from Bethune Cookman. We talked about them struggling a little bit in the half court against Alcorn State's pressure. That time they did a great job of getting the ball from one side of the floor to the other. Ward with nine. As his dunk ties it up. Joshua trying to get around Harmon. And that will be an infraction on Harmon. It'll be team foul number two. Byron Joshua is very crafty, knows how to manipulate fouls. And that's because of his, he's a wily veteran, he knows. Kendall drops in a pair with the right handed flip. Two point lead for Alcorn State. Talked about Kendall, his ability to create in the post area, can finish over both shoulders, can get to his spots and because of his great footwork. Harmon, the feet inside the Ward, and a foul as Ward has been all over the place in this second half. Yeah, Zion Harmon did a really good job of setting that up for Ward, where Alcorn State had no choice but to foul. Harmon, shake and bake, spins off, lobs it up, no good, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, you saw me like that, I got to foul you. <laughs> yeah. You have to save face at that point. You have to, man. Like, at this point, with all the highlights that we've had in this game, I mean, you could easily be on the sports center. Well, you get the throat chopped by me. <laughs> Jaheim Benet picking up the foul. That's his first. The previous foul applied to Gambrell. So three team fouls.
in half two here. Well, you're not going to hesitate spend me with my mom watching this. Friends and family are in front of the two. Can't have that. Nope. Tie game. Thanks for joining us here tonight from Florida as the lean in by Joshua leads to a whistle as we head to a timeout. When we come back, we'll get a look at a day in the life of Reggie. Fe and it's interesting, he has some associate athletic directors that help him out throughout the course of the day. Right. And that's really a big part of the process. It really is a team function to be able to get his job executed on the basketball end, but also for the athletic department. Yeah, you need that. And like we talked about before, I mean, this guy has done it on all levels as an athlete, as a coach, and now as an administrator. We just saw a shot of one of the gentlemen helping him, George Bright, one of the associate athletic directors. He kind of handles the, the morning and afternoon duty to communicate with Reggie Theus about what's going on on campus. Alcorn State with the two-point lead. 49-47. Derek Jones and John Williams with you here tonight in Florida. Two to shoot. And that will be a shot clock violation on Bethune Cookman. That was a great defensive possession for Alcorn State, just being extremely stubborn and protecting the paint. And that's one thing that Bethune Cookman usually can do easy is get paint touches. And they've done well so far. The lob from Hawkins. Jambrell launches, can't hit, tip, grabbed by Hawkins. That one hits the backboard. Loose. Dyson had it, but stepped out of bounds. And it will stay with the Braves. That was one thing that Coach Bussey talked about, emphasizing on getting multiple possessions, crashing the boards, using their size and strength as an advantage. Joshua will set up shop. Five minutes in to half two. Kendall, turnaround shot, up, loose, and the offensive rebound grab by the Braves, strip, and a steal. Behind the back by Harmon, missed a shot, and a foul coming up. It'll be against the Braves. Another highlight real play nearly there by Harmon. And you see why Zion Harmon is so respected in this conference. His defense is leading the offense. He can show his ability in the open floor and draw himself a foul and get two free ones. Second foul against Jalen Hawkins. Another tie game at 49. We started half two, tied at 40. Dead even again. Joshua fighting through traffic to get the ball. And you've noticed that Bethune Cookman has been overly physical with him. And a steal. Good hands by James Henderson. And Ward was wide open. Harmon airmailed the pass. Yeah, that's a good sign when you see Zion Harmon's teammates picking him up because they know that they need him locked in mentally. It's just one mistake. You got to get over it and have short term memory. Kendall. Open is Joshua. Rebound to Ward. Harmon can't hit from deep. Tipped around and now will go the other way. And Henderson has come in and provided some great energy in this half so far. Having active hands and 
doing all the little things. Even though he got that offensive foul, it was in the process of doing something right. Trying to get another rebound for his team, another possession. And shooting percentage for the Braves, backtracking 59% for the game at halftime. Now down to 52. Hawkins. Run out here for the Wildcats. Teddy has 15 so far. Crossing over Hawkins. Scoop shot. Unable to get it to go. Joshua. Now Gambrell harassed in the corner. Joshua will center things up top. Tried to feed it down low, and we will have a foul as working down there was Benet. That's shooting on the floor. It looked like that was going to be on the floor initially. And I think they're going to call this in the act of shooting. in. Jahi Benet to the line. And Coach Spears was asking the same thing. Like, hey, look. But the official said that he was in the process of going up. Anderson will head out. He has three fouls on the evening. As Benet will get another crack at it. To try to extend this Braves lead. Two-point lead. Dyson. Seneca will it be into the contest for Reggie Spears at company. Ten to shoot. War inside. Nice pass. Three ball up. No going. Catches the back of the rim. And a rebound. Corralled by the Braves. Good look there for Hetty. Couldn't get it to drop. Yeah, that's the offense that you want. And Bethune Cookman working inside and then Greed and a, a high percentage outside shot. Bounce pass down low. Reverse layup blocked by Ward. Benet kept it alive and scores. That's big for Benet there. He had active hands all around him, was still able to get the ball up through all that chaos. The France native has extended the lead out to four, so doing damage from the free throw line in the field. Into the backcourt. Now down to seven. Flipping it up and in is Carter Hollinger. And you see why Coach Theus talked so highly of him. His ability to play so many positions offensively as well as defensively. He can guard the guards. He can guard the post. Montana transfer cuts it to a two-point game. The miss by Joshua tipped and grabbed by Dyson. Willoughby feeds Carter Hollinger. Going to work in the low blocks. Turn around, shot up, and no good. And a rebound taken by Hawkins, but it gets knocked to the floor, which will lead to a foul. Duke Carolina, it always delivers. That's a part of the gym here that is to the right. As you get a look at it right there, May 26, 1958. He was right there on that stage. Incredible. Incredible. Two-point lead for the Braves. 
Wildcats have been in chase mode for much of this contest. Good look at a three. Off the mark, the rebound grabbed by Byer. Tipped around and over to Bethune Cookman. So four could not hit from deep. And eventually, the Braves cannot cash in. One thing that's got to give you pause if you are the Wildcats is how many times Alcorn, Alcorn State has had the ability to get another touch. Roar for the flush. I like it. It's a two-year extension dunk right there. <laughs> He's up to 11. Grading high on the John Williams dunk scale. Cut down low and a foul on the attempt by Jaleek Gaines Wyatt. You see there, this is in the midst of, of bodies around you. And he has been very aggressive in this second half, John. 11 points and four rebounds. Right. He's he's been around the rim, he's been around the basketball, and that has helped out this offense. Well, I think he's had had to be. I think that was a part of the game plan coming out of half. Um, when they were in halftime in the locker room, they probably discussed on how to dissect this all corn offense and defense, and he was probably one of the pivotal points. Alcorn State, the two-point lead. Hopping in and fading away as McIntyre. Can't get the bounce. And now the Braves back on the move. Holding a two-point edge. Now setting up shop is Gaines Wyatt. Eight seconds to shoot. Down to four. Decision time. And a foul coming up. Seneca Willoughby will pick up the whistle. Seen that a couple times each way late in the shot clock. A foul helping out the shooter. And it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation as a result because of the eighth team foul. Already a bonus situation. As the first free throw is in from Jalik Gaines Wyatt. One more for the New York native. Six both. It's calm, cool, and collected on that. Four-point lead for the Braves. Bethune Cookman seven and one at home this season. Ward power dribble lost it. Gambro got bumped, but the Braves able to maintain possession, holding a four-point lead. They led by as much as 14 in the first half. Ended up giving up that lead. But now up by four. Thorne to Byer. Lost the ball. Shake a big time for Harmon. Can't hit. Thorne lost the ball on the rebound to tip. Down low. Ward missed the layup. Tip back outside. And now, Gaines Wyatt will settle things down. Yeah, those are one of those possessions that you have to have if you're Bethune Cookman. Kendall spins off, gets clobbered down low. And he'll be headed to the free throw line in a moment. The Braves will look to extend their advantage. Shot at one of those games in the 90s, maybe 100. Oh, yeah. Not so much now with 725 left to go, John. You're seeing play adjustments, and both of these coaches 
do a fantastic job of uh, adapting to the situation who's hot who's not and so they've done so and uh, you know it's showing in the stats now. Alcorn State has done a great job here of kind of slowly but surely getting this game to their liking. Yeah. It's not an up and down, back and forth kind of game that we saw in the first half. They lead it here now by six. And I think that is what the film Cookman wanted. And I think that is what they prepped for as well. Like, if they're going to play that way, they can't sustain that as long as we can. And so now you're seeing Alcorn State switch it up, keep the film Cookman on their toes. Harmon hops in, and a foul coming up. That'll send Harmon to the line. Byron Joshua picks up the whistle. That's number three on Joshua. Both teams chasing Alabama State and Grambling. In the SWAC standings, each team at five and one. A win for Bethune Cookman would put them and keep them in shouting distance. Heading into the night, just a game out of first place. Zion Harmon, he's such an explosive and fun player to watch, John. Absolutely. And, and we talked about him in the open of today's game, just what he brings to the table on both ends of the floor. I mean, we talk about his offensive ability, but also what he's been able to create on the defensive end by creating chaos, having active hands, and getting steals or being a part of those steals. Kendall. Now Hawkins. Can't hit the three. Hit on his first three shots. A little cold sense. Four-point game. Braves up. Harmon on the attack. Drives. Off the window. No good. The board to the Braves. Gaines Wyatt with 6.20 left. Kendall, long jumper. Tracked down by McIntyre. McIntyre gets a step cut off. Baseline drive, the flip to the rim missing. The battle still raging on down low. Kept alive by Bethune Cookman. McIntyre steps into a three. Got it. Big time three for McIntyre, who was able to get some space, but it all was created by Bethune Cookman on the boards, creating a second chance, fighting for it, doing whatever they could to corral the ball and get it out. To an open three. Nine seconds to operate for Joshua. One point lead for the Braves, and they'll have a chance to add to it off the drive by Joshua. As he's going to take his time to rise back up to his feet. see a much needed and necessary three here for Bethune Cookman McIntyre just stepping into the three and whenever you have an offensive rebound most of the time the defense is all imploded they're all in there so it's going to be an inside out action that creates high percentage basketball from the three point line Joshua no good on the first an 81 percent shooter from the line this season can't hit there Benet back in for Alcorn State. Joshua taking his time. And he extends the lead out to two. Back and forth we go. No question about it. Fantastic finish could be on the way. The three from the corner missed. 
Loose out of bounds, it'll stick with the throw and Cookman off the missed three by Deshaun Dyson. And you see how important it is to keep the ball alive no matter what. Launches. Got it. Huge three for Bethune Cookman. Zion Harmon. Living up to the name. He has 21 points. Joshua floating away from the rim. No good. Carter Hollinger going to grab the rebound. As now. Dyson will slow things down. Bethune Cookman doing this without Jacoby Hetty. We haven't seen him into the game for quite some time. Harmon dips in. Reverse layup and go. Now that's just silly. Now we're just now we're just being silly out here. Zion Harmon using the inside hand, putting just the right amount of English for the ball to spin. And ward off all defenders. That's awesome. 8-1 run for Bethune Cookman. And Carter, or excuse me, Gaines Wyatt ending. That run. McIntyre, he can't answer the three. The follow there by Carter Hollinger. And he is fouled. Three forty-two left to go. It is heating up here. And the energy, but also just doing the little things on the defensive end to make life terrible for the primary ball handlers of Alcorn State. I mean, he's done a great job. Carter Hollinger, no good on the first. Derek Jones and John Williams with you tonight as the Wildcats holding a one point lead. Make it a two-point lead over Alcorn State. Joshua gets it back. Looking for Kendall. Let's see if they try to get him going. Intercepted instead. One on three. Harmon. Loses the ball, but it's saved and flipped up and in. What a play by Damani McIntyre. That's big time. That's big time, and it all started. Zion Harmon getting the steal, getting out in the open floor. McIntyre trailing just in case. And you got to have those situations. Big steal. And one. He finishes off the three-point play. That looked like a disaster potentially with a one-on-three, but it gets turned into a three-point play and a five-point lead for Bethune Cookman. McIntyre did a fantastic job of trailing just in case something happened there. And Joshua goes to the rim, gets fouled, and now he'll have a shot at a three-point play. What action. Byron Joshua is not the biggest guy out there, but has the finishing ability and strength to get to the basket on a consistent clip. And you see here, he's back at the line. Such a special flair for Alcorn State. Free throw attempt number five misses. Joshua now three of five from the charity stripe. It's a three-point lead for Bethune Cookman. Trying to grab their eighth home win of the season for just one loss. Five to shoot for Harmon. Wild shot. Almost climbed in, but instead a possession for Joshua and the Braves. Goes around the defender. Had the ball knocked away from him. Back over to the Wildcats. John what do you think of that possession there? Joshua trying to go against the grain a little bit. So we just talked about could have been a disaster with Zion Harmon going against three there and understanding the numbers around you. I don't think Byron Joshua 
had enough numbers around him. There was no trail, nobody there to help him just in case something happened. Each team with three timeouts left. And that pass too hot for Dyson to hold. Byard heads back in. He'll get Benet. Under two minutes left to go. 40 all at halftime. Bethune Cookman down by 14 in the first half. They lead it. Kendall throws it up at the rim. Too strong. Dyson with a rebound. And you can see the pressure should mount now here, man. It's, this could go down the wire. Harmon right near the sideline under duress and a timeout call by Bethune Cookman. Can they close this out? Find out when we return. For Zion Harmon, 12 points in the first half, 11 in half two. And now, an opportunity for Bethune Cookman to pick up their fifth win in the SWAC. Harmon into the corner with 10 to shoot. Dyson will pull it. No good. Tip battling still. And now the Braves control. And we'll get a timeout from Alcorn State. Now each way left with two timeouts. That was definitely a, a, a smart timeout for quite interesting for the Braves. They lost their first 13 road games. They're two and one in their last three. They played 14 straight road games from November 14th to January 6th. And that included a few dates with some power five schools. Gambrell down low to Kendall, puts it in. Now, one of the officials not pleased with what he's hearing from ready for whatever Alcorn State's throwing at him. One timeout one left for the Braves. Two timeouts left for the Wildcats. One point lead for Bethune Cookman. And I tell you, this has been entertaining basketball, entertaining environment. Harmon with the feed and he threw it away. And a whistle and another timeout called by the Braves. And that is their final timeout. So they opt to do to keep that six man active out here at 11 in the <laughs> 11 p.m. at night. I know it's college students, but it's late. It's late, man. It's late. You got to keep that energy going. I'm going to tell you, I'm a 9 a.m. guy. <laughs> Sometimes earlier than that. I got kids, man. They're going to have to fix the clock. Cookman. The game that was 40-40 at halftime. The offense has been hard to come by here in half two. And both teams have tightened up on the defensive end. Eight ties, four lead changes. Kendall, the kick out. Inside the Kendall puts it in. 68 to 67 with 17 seconds left to go. Bethune Cookman has one timeout left. I gotta stand up. Baseline drive. Dyson gets hit. Out of bounds. It will stay with Bethune Cookman with 8.6 left to go. A lot of contact there. You see Alcorn's loss. Here at Moore Gymnasium. A rare national TV opportunity for Bethune Cookman in their building, and they want to end it on a high note. Execution is key for that. 
in the war. Down to six, stolen. With three seconds left to go, Joshua throws it ahead with 1.4 left. And Joshua very pleased with the proceedings as the Braves will go to the free throw line to try to add to this advantage with 1.4 left. You see Joshua doing everything he could, knowing that there was a DHO coming. And you see there Thorne blow up the dribble handoff. Talk so much about the ability to create steals on the side of Bethune-Cookman. And it's the Braves who may have come up with the biggest steal of the game. Joshua, four of six from the line. Now make it five of seven. And Bethune-Cookman will use their final timeout as the clock got bumped up to 2.1 seconds. We'll toss it in. The Braves looking for their fifth win of the season. The long pass down the floor. That's stolen. And that will be the ball game. Allcorn State comes to Daytona Beach, Florida and steals a victory from Bethune-Cookman. John, an impressive outing for the Braves.